Hello, my name is Rollin, and welcome to Oberland. Welcome back. If you've been watching this series, this is part three in a series where I'm building a what I call an ultimate woodworking station slash bench slash island, uh, my version anyway. Part one and two, we put the frame. I prepped all the plywood pieces here that are going to make up the vertical support of this bench. And then in uh, part two, we put them all together. We screwed them together. I put a few of the floor pieces on and we did the electrical. Uh, I wanted to do this all before I put the top on so that I wouldn't have to be crawling around, you know, getting under things. So in part three here, my goal is to get most of the top on and then we get to put our first tool on, yay. We're gonna start with the table saw. One thing on the table saw is that this fence here has a rack and pinion uh, system on it that um, allows it you to adjust your, your distance. And it also, in order to get a wider width of cut here, is you can take this fence off and you can move it. And what that means for us right now is that if I want this top to be level with the top, this is gonna be in the table, if you will, and so I have to make a cut in my top so that this thing can move. Um, I also have to make provision for this handle right here to be able to open and close, okay? So that I can move this fence into the different positions that I want. You know, I don't want to limit any of the features of this table saw while it's sitting on my bench. And so I have made provision for that. This cutout here is, is for that handle. I have to cut like a half circle right here in the top of this so that this thing can, so I can do that. What I'm gonna do to make that partial circle, uh, one way you could do it is just to draw the partial circle and then cut it out with a, um, a jigsaw. What I'm gonna do is a little trick that I learned from a drywaller. Um, I'm gonna make a guide for a hole saw. If I didn't do this, you know, the hole saw would, would chatter and totally mess up the hole. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I've got this marked here, drill all the way through it, and this is gonna be a guide, okay? I'm gonna place this drilled out circle exactly where I want that partial circle to be and then I'm gonna clamp this down and then I'm gonna take my hole saw go through that guide and through the wood so that the guide holds the hole saw in place instead of it messing up my hole saw that's going to go in there. These slots here coincide with the holes that we've drilled into the wall panels. 
And so this, just like the bearings that I've got with the slotted uh, holes, this whole thing can move up and down an inch uh, centered on where I've calculated that saw needs to go. But that way I can really fine tune that saw to be exactly perfectly level with the top of the bench so that the boards slide through very nicely on the top. What this is also going to do is give this platform that the table saw is sitting on a lot more support than just a three quarter inch sheet of plywood would. That's how it's going to look. This is upside down. I'm going to screw it from what would be the top down into these and uh, in from the sides and in from, from this side. All right guys, so that was a lot harder than I thought to get that thing leveled. I had to get it level both this way with this surface and with this surface over here. And the platform could, could tip this way and could tip this way in every direction in between. So it was very difficult to do, but I think we got it really well. I ended up putting a floor jack right here and a hydraulic jack here that's just what i had with me in the shop and it actually worked pretty decent to you know very gradually lift that up and hold it in place um, sturdily so that i could fasten the eight bolts that held this thing in place so i'm actually pretty happy with it and uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see there in the camera, but it, it, it is very level um, on both surfaces, okay? Uh, one thing you'll notice is I have wood zero clearance inserts in here now. I had to make these because I broke my other one. It was kind of bent. It wasn't sitting in there very well, and so I tried to bend it back, and it snapped on me, and so I ended up making these out of solid oak um, and I'll end up putting a, another video on how I made it and I actually have another one too. This one here is for my cross cut and um, plywood blade which is a full kerf and then I actually have another one here for my thinner uh, ripping blade as well. So like I said I'll put another video on those but I really like how those turned out. They're perfectly level with the top and uh, I think they'll, they'll do pretty well for me. One thing I want to add here yet is, obviously I need to cover this section of it, uh, but I'm trying to figure out, and I'm still thinking about this, on how to store some of the various parts for the table saw. I've got my, um, just the regular construction ripping blade, all per general purpose blade there that I still use for um, cutting you know, if I've got some reclaimed lumber that may have a nail in it that I don't know about or something like that, you know, I don't want to destroy my $85 uh, mana blade. Um, and so I use that, but it's got a thinner kerf on it. So that's what that other uh, zero clearance insert is for. Uh, but I want to be able to store that, you know, right here, have it handy. Also, these wrenches, they were stored over here, uh, but I don't want to reach around there. So, you know, I want to have them here. I want to have them like mounted at an angle like this so I can just quickly grab them to change blades out um, you know I want to have storage for for inserts I'm thinking maybe something like that uh, so a little platform in there and then somehow to store it to store extra blades and things uh, to go in there so maybe if you guys have some ideas maybe shoot them into the comments section and to cover this, the other thing that I'm running into is the riving knife release lever. So that's this right here. As you can see, this is much thinner than three quarters of an inch. Also, you know, I would have to reach down in here. So I'm not really, I'm not really too excited about making this cover have a big hole in it 
so that I can reach down and do this. Uh, the mechanism underneath is actually fairly simple. Um, you know, it's just got a, a cable here that I could undo. I could make a, a mount for this uh, bracket that holds the end of it and make a new uh, hinge point for this and make it vertical somehow so that I could just pull it out like this, just reach underneath and, and pull it out. Um, so I'm thinking about how to, how to do that as well. Uh, the other thing then is this top here has no support on this side. And so that's why I'm trying to, <clears throat> I gotta give some time and thought into this because you know, how do I make something that's going to hold these blades and have this vertical pull out here and have some sort of a structural aspect to it to hold this side of the top of this. So I'm giving that some more thought, but I'm going to go ahead while I'm doing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next item in our series, uh, which is going to be the router table uh, one thing this whole storage area under here i'm thinking right now just off the top of my head that i'm going to use that for just small scrap pieces of wood just to store at this point until i find a better use for it uh, you know there's always you always need that sacrificial piece or like for any small project you just need you know those smaller pieces that would probably just get thrown away if they were, you know, sitting around leaning against the wall or laying on the floor somewhere. Obviously, it can't hold very big pieces, but so that's kind of what I'm going to do with that for now, you know, until I, I find a, a better use for that. All right, guys, and that finishes up uh, part three, which was the table saw install. Um, I just want to show you just a couple little features on the table saw before we wrap this video up. Uh, this has a 32 and a half inch width of cut uh, or ripping width. Um, and so I was able to obtain that by stretching this all the way out. You can, you can get that full width of cut there because now, and now we have a nice platform here, addition for holding uh, the wider pieces of stock. Um, and I'll just show you here really quickly. So if I undo these two things, and then I can pull this out. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, so then you can move it over a little bit to this next pin here if you want to get some narrower cuts. There we go. And so you can see with this, I had to make that little semicircle opening there so that I could so that I could use that locking mechanism to change position. So now so now it only goes out. Um, to you can see the 24 and a and five eighths to three quarters there uh, inch mark and I can come right up to right up to the blade now <clears throat> what DeWalt did and I'll have to pull this out uh, what DeWalt did with their with their riving knives that's just your basic riving knife there okay so if I t pull this riving knife out and I put the more the safer riving knife in, we'll call it that for now, okay? But now with your, if you wanna, say you wanna only make a quarter inch little strip for something, you know, you can't, you can't get close to your blade because, because this hits, okay? So they made this flip over thing and this has two different uh, purposes, one of which we don't need anymore. Um, it could fold down all the way, which it can't anymore because I have this here but it, it folds down and it becomes a support for your wider cuts if you didn't have this piece of MDF, which we have now, so we don't need that. But also you can push this up, click it in like that, and now you can come in and you can make those very close cuts, okay? Uh, and still have the safety of your guards here. The third position, we'll unlock this and pull this all the way over here. I was lucky to find this position because at this, this is the only position where all three interchanges can take place to the three different positions because now I can put it on this way and actually I'm not gonna be able to do this because the blade's in the way. Well, I can, 
I'll pull the blade down. So we're gonna pull the blade down. There we go. Okay, now I'll get this out of the way, which that can work from both sides too. But now you have, now you can go all the way out to whatever this distance is, is here. It's not marked on, on here, but um, you'll just have to measure that independently. But anyway, so you, you can use it from the left side as well. Um, and so that's a really nice feature of this saw. Um, really like the saw. I'm gonna go into more detail on a different video on all the different tools that I have and go th and basically do reviews on all those. Um, but that's basically the, what I'll show you um, for now. Behind here, if you look in here, we can also see we have our port for dust collection. Okay, so obviously our dust collection is here. Um, I made it wide so that as, you know, if you do want to do a, a 30 or 45 or whatever angle bevel on your cut, um, your dust collection will still be able to, to happen here. And uh, we'll hook that up in another video as well. I just kind of hook it up as I need it for now and use it a little bit. So with that guys, Thanks for watching. I really like how this turned out. And like I said, in the next video, we're gonna cover the router table. And I'm really excited about that. We'll see you next time.